You can believe or not, for example, in God, you can be atheist, you can be whatever you like, okay? Uh, you can discover of science is something which is very deep of men that does not prevent to be free to believe what you want. So, I mean, uh, the freedom to believe uh, whatever you like, I mean, now, I mean, it's, it's very interesting to have today, uh, let's say, a sacred art, okay, in a modern art environment that exactly express what I think must be the real dialogue between uh, different kind of language, different kind of, uh, of, of arts, different kind of beliefs, uh, to, to find a matching point in which we find common things we can discuss about. And in this context, I think, uh, to be honest with, with ourselves, that's a very important point. In some sense, I mean, uh, you are pretty honest to say, I decided to uh, to uh, to make sacred art, and I respect uh, uh, I respect someone else that makes some other decisions. But we find a common field in which we can we can talk about, and uh, we can find common points, and we can enrich ourselves. So, what, what can you say in your in your uh, you you told me an experience uh, you had with the with a modern artist in New York about this? Can you can you maybe? Yeah, well, my tutor in the New York Academy was Eric Fischel. I don't know if anybody you know Eric Fischel's work. Yeah. Eric is a really nice guy, but we have a completely different approach to the human body <laughs> and the human condition. Uh, so, I, initially I didn't want him because he's a painter, I wanted a sculptor. Uh, but I ended up having him, and it turned out to be a very interesting experience. <laughs> because uh, we were meant to have a half hour session every, every week or so. It turned out to be an hour and a half every week, uh, because we just got so deeply involved in, in uh, understanding each other's work and understanding each other through the body. So that our, our, our vocabulary, our, our uh, language was the body and we were communicating to each other through our di different approaches to the body. So, uh, but one thing I respect, I respect he, he was honest with, he's honest with his understanding of what it means to be a human being. And he, respected me because I was honest with my understanding of what it means to be a human being. I would be more, uh, I'd be more in the Michelangelo guys of trying to aspire, I'm not from like Michelangelo, but uh, aspiring to, uh, to the divine, I'm aspiring to the spiritual. Uh, and it's that tension between, I think this is what makes it very interesting, makes, makes Michelangelo very interesting, is that you have the fallen nature of the human condition aspiring to the divine. And it's that tension, that ascetical struggle of the interior life, which is manifest in his work. That's it's that tension that makes his work so real and so uh, understandable to so many people, because everybody has that struggle. We all struggle with our fallen nature and trying to be better, and uh, and, and that's very very manifest in Michelangelo's work. Uh, whereas he will be more inclined towards the Rodin. Uh, approach, which is more uh, a, a different approach. <laughs> uh, so, um, but both of them are very powerful artists. And of course, Michelangelo is superior. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, there, there's uh, there's a, there's a similar tension, uh, but uh, but their ten their tensions are working in different directions. But there is that honesty, and that's one thing I, I fundamentally respect. If there is an honesty, then there is a there is a possibility of communication and dialogue, but there must be a respect for reason. Reason is something that we, all human beings, that's what makes us human, I believe that's what makes us human, is our, uh, our use of reason. That, that's one of the fundamental aspects of our dignity as human beings, that we can use reason to dialogue, but without reason, there's chaos and there's real problems. So it's, it's a, a and I would try to use that, that faith and reason together because I believe that reason gets us so far, but we need faith to go that bit further. If we, if we limit ourselves just to rational thought, we, we are only seeing half, half of the human condition. We have to go further. And in order to go further, you need to penetrate aspects of faith. And, and, and that's where I come from. To go deeper uh, into a human being, uh, it means to be interdisciplinary because human being, uh, as you were saying 
their case, uh, it's scientifically it was composed by the skeleton, by the muscles, but of course, the way we, we percept, we, the way we think, the way we feel, it's a very complex world. So I, uh, I'm starting from an interdisciplinary aspects approach, and I, I think that's, that's really the, 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 the final goal, but I, I think, and that's a fantastic mean to arrive uh, to the final goal, and the final goal is the comprehension of the human being. Uh, now, the, uh, I think one, one very important aspect is the absence of prejudice. And this is very, very tricky today. Because what we see today is, uh, from the cultural point of view, uh, here in Florence, uh, we have a wealthy Ghibellini. And uh, when I was taking the coffee, the, the, co the, the coffee man, he was exactly saying that since uh, 500 years in, in Florence, we were discussing between each other, you know. So, uh, I think the absence of uh, ideologies, of prejudice, um, it's, it's very important in science. I don't know, maybe also in art. But I can tell you for sure in science, we have dramatic problems from the bioethical point of view, from uh, the way we have uh, to express some, uh, some technological development, which are touching which are touching the many deep. Think about clonations, uh, think about stem cell applications. I mean, there are huge uh, uh, challenging aspects which must be deal with. So, uh, I think it's a great opportunity to grow and to find common solution for people uh, which are believers, or not believers, whatever it is. But one important point is that uh, the dialogue is not the absence of ideas. The dialogue is the, to be completely convinced of what you think, to express proudly your ideas, uh, to respect with a big sense of freedom the person that you have in front of you. Those are two main aspects which are a very important dialogue in science and I think also in arts, and which are the main starting point which we have to build up something together. Okay? And um, I think that the freedom it's expressed totally with a, a big knowledge. When, are, when you have the full knowledge, then you are completely free. Otherwise, you're not. So, in which way, I would say, uh, what, I, what I was saying in, uh, in, uh, in science, can, uh, which is the interdisciplinary, let's say, uh, in, uh, in art, if you want to compare with science. And in science, it's not only having uh, a medical doctor and a physicist, physicist working together. I also think uh, that uh, I was, uh, I was uh, talking with a, a friend of mine yesterday or two days ago at, at the dinner. We were saying that uh, the soul is within the skin, you know. So when, uh, when you have a, a patient in front of you, it's not a number, it's a person. And when I'm uh, studying uh, uh, a cell, I mean, it's not a simple <laughs> assembling of molecules. There is something uh, deeper behind it. Uh, you can call God, you can call uh, an intelligence, or you can call an harmony, you can call beauty, for example. So, I mean, the interdisciplinary approach, it's think that there are other realities that you don't know, maybe, other aspects that you don't know because you are limited, and that you need to work with others. You need to be humble. I need you because I cannot, I cannot go on. I cannot go on because I, I have a limited knowledge. I need your knowledge to go on. And